Hey everyone, it's Nomad Flair here and welcome back to another PS5 Pro Controller video. Today we'll be exploring two well-known PS5 Pro Controllers to see which one will be crowned king. In the red corner, we have the DualSense Edge and in the blue, we have the Victress Pro BFG. The scoring based system will include six categories, the build quality, the design, the remappable rear buttons, adaptive triggers, thumbsticks and price. I have reviewed both of those controllers individually and I therefore recommend watching those videos after this one to get more information about the accessories that I included. If you are interested in picking up one of these controllers, I've left links down in the description. Let's begin. Firstly, both are licensed PlayStation controllers and come in a hard shell carry case. The DualSense Edge case is much harder on the outside and the compartments on the inside are arranged better in my opinion. Whereas the Victress has a slightly softer case and the compartments feel flimsy and soft. These are all the accessories that I included with each controller. When holding both controllers in your hands for the first time, you can tell that the DualSense Edge feels more premium than the Victress due to its heavier mass. It's heavier than the original DualSense controllers. Whereas with the BFG, it's even lighter than the original DualSense. For me, I prefer the heavier feel, whereas others might prefer the lighter feel. The overall build quality of the DualSense Edge just feels more prestige than the Victress. The buttons feel very sturdy and solid and are also very responsive. The triggers don't feel flimsy and the remappable rear buttons are durable as they're made out of metal. The only area that feels a little flimsy is the black glossy centerpiece right here. This does feel a bit weak when removed due to its plastic build. On the other hand, the Victress has a plastic body which feels hollow and not premium as the Edge. The remappable rear buttons are also plastic and can't be removed. Therefore, it's clear to say that the Edge has the overall better build quality and wins in this area. And moving on to the design of the controllers. The Edge still retains a familiar layout to existing DualSense controllers, but there is a few changes. The touchpad, which is now black instead of white, has an array of PlayStation symbols scattered all across it in rows. The symbols are also on the L2 and R2 triggers at the back. The buttons and the D-pads are now black on the controller, which actually makes the controller look more aesthetically pleasing to the eyes than the original in my opinion. The bottom centerpiece has a glossy black finish to it, which does tend to pick up fingerprints annoyingly. Within this bottom piece are the addition of two new FN buttons, known as the function buttons, which allow you to customize your buttons and set up different customizable profiles for specific games that you play. At the back of the controller, we have two insertions RB and LB for the remappable buttons. And lastly, Sony have added an enhanced grip on both handles to minimize the risk of the controller slipping out of your hands during those long gaming sessions. Whereas the BFG has an anti sense design and more like an Xbox controller look due to its shorter handles. The controller has an ergonomic feel when holding it in your hands with a dual color tone. The majority of the BFG is black with a bit of purple here and there, which brings it to life. Weirdly, the controller does not have an inbuilt microphone, but does have a headphone jack. Some gamers might find this to be a major issue, but for me, I have a gaming headset which has a microphone, so I'm not bothered. The Victress branding can be found here on the side and the logo is located at the center where the touchpad is usually located. However, this button doesn't function like a touchpad. The two buttons on the left and right are your typical menu and share buttons and function like normal. And here is a functions button, which has several features, which we'll look at later on. Out of the box, the controller comes in this layout, which of course is completely different to your typical PlayStation controller. The layout of the Victress can be altered, which is actually a big pro as this gives you a big benefit depending what game you are playing. For example, a fight pad module can be added if you play beat em up titles, which makes the overall gaming experience more enjoyable. The PlayStation button at the front works as it should do, but weirdly does not switch on the PS5, I have to press the button on the PS5 and then the controller switches on. Not sure why this simple feature wasn't added. At the back of the controller, we have four rear remappable buttons, which is an extra two over the DualSense Edge. However, these are inbuilt and can't be removed, which I actually like. The adjustable triggers are fairly large, which suits players with big hands and have a five level adjustable system, which can be complicated initially to set up. So for design, I'll say the BFG wins by less than an inch due to having removable modules, a fight pad, and four rear remappable buttons. Very close though. Both controllers have the option of adjusting the triggers. However, the adjustment process and feel is different for both. The Edge comes with three levels of adjustability and can be changed just by flicking the switch. The top level gives you a full range of travel when pressing the triggers. The second level has less travel and the bottom level, which I use for Warzone, has the shortest travel and therefore when pressed, it provides me with instant aiming and firing. The buttons feel very sturdy and responsive. 
The triggers on the BFG are large, which is a good thing. However, they do feel flimsy and have a cheap plasticky feel, sadly. The adjustable triggers have five levels ranging from normal to instant. To adjust the levels, just turn these two buttons to the left or right. Now the triggers have gone from normal to instant. I would say the triggers are far more sensitive to touch than the edge. So many players won't be able to handle playing at full instant. And therefore, like myself, many would have to tune the trigger slightly below instant, just so you're not aiming and firing when resting your fingers on the triggers. To adjust the triggers so they fall between normal and instant, you need to do this manually by pushing the rear button in and pressing the trigger button down to where you want it to sit. This will be fiddly for the first couple of times, but you will get used to it. Therefore, I would say that the edge wins in this category due to feeling less oversensitive to touch, if that makes sense, and providing us with an easier adjusting process and a sturdy feel, of course. The DualSense Edge comes with two sets of rear remappable buttons to choose from, one pair of lever buttons and one pair of half dome buttons. You can also equip one half dome on one side and one lever button on the other side. I prefer using the lever buttons over the dome as they feel more natural to press than the dome. I would say that the half dome are more catered to individuals with smaller hands and as you may know, remappable buttons allows you to map any button to it that you like. I prefer to map circle and X as it gives me a competitive edge when playing Warzone as I no longer need to remove my thumb off the right analog stick to press X or circle to slide and jump. At the back of the BFG, we can find four inbuilt remappable buttons which can't be removed. I really like the positioning of these buttons. It feels natural in my hands and everything is so close. Having two extra remappable buttons, which the edge does not have, allows me to assign square and triangle, which significantly improves my pace and reaction time in first person shooters, giving me a competitive edge. Assigning these buttons on both controllers is relatively straightforward, but the Victress is much easier as it can all be done from the controller itself. Just press the profile button at the back of the controller, followed by the rear button you would like to map. The LED light will begin to flash, then press the button on the controller you want to be copied. Then the LED light will stop flashing, indicating that the process is complete. Whereas with the Edge, this must be done on the PlayStation 5. To set this up, hold the function button down and the options key at the same time. Here you can create three custom assigned profiles to either of these buttons. Select which button you want to map and then name your profile. After that, we can customize the button assignments, stick sensitivity, trigger dead zone, vibration intensity, and trigger effect intensity. So starting with customizing the back buttons, I use circle and X for Warzone, and I can change and flip any of these buttons I want. So it's clear that the Victress wins in this area as we are provided with four inbuilt remappable buttons and the customization can all be done from the controller itself. So there's no need for me to exit the game to change the settings. Onto the thumbsticks, both can be removed on each controller. However, I feel like the Edge does a better job with this because we are provided with more thumbsticks to start off with. This includes two low dome and two high dome. Whereas with the Victress, it only includes one low dome and one high dome, which I found a little bizarre in my opinion. I prefer using two high dome on the edge as this reduces fun fatigue, allowing me to game for much longer. To add to this, if I was to ever damage my analog sticks or encounter stick drift, the entire module can be replaced for 20 pounds or 20 dollars. However, sadly with the Victress, I was unable to find replacement modules online, which means that I would have to purchase an entirely new controller. I can also alter the stick sensitivity on the edge for the left and right sticks individually. For the sensitivity curve option, there are several to choose from. Just read the information to see which curve will suit your gameplay. Then you can adjust the curve and the dead zone also, which gives you an instant feel of how these changes will affect the stick movement there and there. Unfortunately, this advanced level of customization is not available on the Victress Pro and therefore the Edge wins in this area. Lastly, moving on to the price for each controller, the DualSense Edge will cost around £209 or $200. The Victress is slightly cheaper, coming in around £180. However, cheaper doesn't mean it's better. You have to bear in mind that the BFG being a Pro controller lacks several basic functions that are included in your standard DualSense. This includes no Bluetooth connectivity, which means in order to use the controller wirelessly, you must use this USB dongle, which runs a 2.5 Hz connectivity, which will take up a USB port on your PS5. Additionally, there is no inbuilt vibration, so playing campaign titles won't be as immersive. And of course, as mentioned earlier, the lack of an inbuilt microphone. The build quality is cheap and plasticky across the entire controller, whereas yes, the edge is slightly more expensive, 
but you do get an overall better Pro Controller, which includes all the basic functions, premium build, which feels very durable and long-lasting, replaceable thumbsticks, and quality adaptive triggers and more customizable features. Therefore, in my opinion, the DualSense wins in this area, even though it's more expensive, and overall wins as the best controller to own out of these two, hands down. Okay guys, I hope you found today's video to be somewhat helpful in narrowing your selection. Comment down below which controller you have and if you're planning to pick up any one of these controllers. Links to the controllers are down below in the description. I would appreciate if you could leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for quality tech and gaming related videos. Until next time everyone, take care. It's not a game, it's a red